Welcome to My Church London. My name is Brad. Thank you so much for joining us today. Here at My Church, oh, we love God's Word. We love the community. We love people. We love coming together to worship the Lord. Uh, that's what we're going to do today. If you would like to know more about us, uh, please join us on our Facebook page. You can also follow us on Instagram at My Church London. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, please uh, do send us a message on Instagram or Facebook. And we have a team of pastors that will be ready and waiting to pray with you. We just want to pray for God's will to be done. So God, we just thank you for this time of worship. And Lord, we know that uh, <laughs> it's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. But we know that you have a plan and that you know what you're doing and that there is purpose in everything. So God, right now, we just pray for the encouragement of your people all around the world. God, we just pray for your presence. Everyone who's at home watching, God, we don't know what they're going through. We don't know what they're facing. God, but we just know that there's one thing you promised and that was to never leave or forsake us. So God, everyone who's watching right now, Lord Jesus, we just even pray right now into disappointment. Anyone who just had plans or thought things were going to go a certain way and they're just a little disappointment with how this year has turned out that far this far God we just pray your encouragement Holy Spirit just rise in their lives rise wherever they are at right now God and just you are the comforter so we thank you God that you're comforting everyone that feels disappointed and out of place Lord Jesus everyone who just feels really busy God we just ask right now Holy Spirit that you invade them wherever they're at whether they're at home or they're at work Holy Spirit that they just take a moment to pause just to pause in your presence and hear what you're saying and see what you're doing and listen to you we just open our ears to you for you to say what you want to say for you to do what you want to do holy spirit it's all about you it's all about your purpose it's all about your plan even right now, God, we know that there's a lot of needs out there. There are people who are in need, um, financial need. Um, they're in need of healing. And right now, we just pray, even during this time of worship, that Holy Spirit, you move by your power because you're good, because you're kind. You are able, God. We know that we don't have the power, but the power is in you, God. The power is in your hands, God. The power, the power. We thank you for your power. So Holy Spirit, we just surrender this time of worship to you. We surrender this moment to you. We surrender our lives to you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you.
You're safe and secure With all power and love And the sound mind of Christ So we enter your end You're safe and secure All power rest in your hands All power rest in your hands We know that all power rest in your hands All power rest in your hands All power rest in your hands We know that all power rest in your hands Jesus In your Jesus In your hands Lord Rest in your hands All power rest in your
else will do Nothing else will do Nothing else will do We need Jesus Nothing else will do Nothing else will do Nothing else will do We need Jesus Nothing else will do now Nothing else will do now Nothing else will do We need Jesus Nothing else will do Nothing else will do now Nothing else will do We need Jesus We call it on your name Lord We need Jesus And we need Jesus Nothing else will do Nothing else will do Nothing else will do We need Jesus Nothing else will do Nothing else will do Nothing else will do In the atmosphere is changing now The oh, spirit of the Lord is here And the evidence is all around For the spirit of the Lord is here In the atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here and the evidence is all around for the spirit of the Lord is here overflow in this place fill our hearts with Hearts with your love, your love.
and spirit of God fall fresh on us. We need your presence in your king to come, and your will be done here. for this weekend, but I just want us to just submit ourselves to God and whatever that he has for you. So I just want you to even declare right now, wherever you are, say, I am seated in the presence of the King of Kings. Say that with me. I am seated in the presence of the King of Kings. He goes before me. He goes behind me. My Lord is with me. Sing it out. My God is with me. My God is present. He is my ever-present help when I am in need. Just put your hand over your mind. This is something that I love to do, but it's something that's very powerful where we just pray the mind of Christ into our lives. So God, we thank you that we will be transformed by the mind of Christ every day that there are new mercies for us, God. So we don't settle on the mercies of yesterday, but we know that each day there are new mercies that we can receive from you. So we just right now invoke all of heaven and we say, God, whatever mercy that you have for me today, God, whatever you have for me today, don't let me miss it. Don't let me miss it with frustration. Don't let me miss it with busyness. Don't let me miss it with fear. Don't let me miss it with frustration. Right now, we open ourselves up to the mercies. What do you want to teach us, God? What do you want to show us, God? Where do you want to lead us, God? What do you want to pour out on us, God? We open ourselves up to whatever you want to do, to do whatever you want to, God, in our hearts, even right now at home. Just put your hand over your heart and say, God, take my heart, take my will, God, take my emotions, take everything. We lay it all at the feet of Jesus, for we are nothing without you, God. Just cry out at home. Say, I am nothing without you, Jesus. Just lift up your voice in thanksgiving. God, we are thankful that you've given us a chance. We are thankful for your sacrifice. We are thankful, God, that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus because of your sacrifice. We thank you, God, that you became sin so that we could be free. Just lift up your voice at home. Sing hallelujah. Open up your mouth and thank the Lord. Are you grateful? Are you grateful? Open up your mouth. I know some of you are like, I'm just at home watching this on TV. But God wants to invade your space. God wants to invade your home. God wants to invade your situation right now. I know some of you are stubborn. You're like, I'm not going to do it. I just encourage you right now to raise your hands. Raise your hands. Submit to Jesus. God, we repent. We repent for not leaning on you. We repent for not calling on you. We repent for not making you everything that we ever want and needed God show us your face today show us your face show us your love show us your path give us your presence God we are nothing without your presence we are nothing without your presence let us not do things without your presence let us not take steps without your presence let us not try to make a way for ourselves when you've laid out a path and you laid out a place so even right now we submit God what do you have for us even right now we've tried to make our plans but the word says many are the plans of man but it is the Lord's plan that prevails so right now we lay our plans at the altar we lay our tell us God what do you want us to do where do you want us to go 
What do you want us to say, God? We lay it at the altar for your plan, your will, God. We repent right now for making our own plans, for thinking that we can control you. We can control what you want to do with us, God. We are yours. So we submit these vessels to you. Use us, God. Breathe through us. Spread your word through us. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Right now, anyone that needs healing, I just encourage you right now to rise in faith in your home. I just encourage you now because it's just, it's just, it's just putting it at the altar, at the feet of Jesus, knowing that you can't control the situation, knowing that you can't manipulate God, but just saying right now, I trust you, God. And in this atmosphere, we, I'm partnering with faith with you right now. I'm believing that we're going to have some testimonies. Some people are going to message us back and say that they were healed because they submitted it to the King of Kings. So right now, lay your hands or if there's someone sick in the room next to you right now God we pray over them right now in the mighty name of Jesus that this sickness does not end in death but it is for the glory of God so that the son of man may be glorified they do not have a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind and we declare right now by your stripes they are healed in the mighty matchless all powerful name of Jesus we give you glory we're not even worried about the sickness we don't even have to lower ourselves to call out its name because we know a name that's bigger than any sickness and it's the name of Jesus so just begin to declare the name of Jesus say Jesus 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 if it's mental illness say Jesus 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 now lift up your voice and let's get one more shout of praise we don't have to labor because he works because he works because his name works so on the count of three let's give out one more shout of praise ready one two three hallelujah jesus oh jesus come on don't get tired push through push through hallelujah we receive it say i receive it say i receive it it's done it's done if you're struggling with sleep sleep well tonight if you're toiling with worry or anxiety be at peace right now receive everything that came with the cross I thank you God for their lives not their church lives not their work lives but the life you have given them the person that you created so that you could know Jesus we thank you thank you and we thank you that as this year goes on they are all going to continue in intimacy with you and whatever is going around around them has called them into intimacy with you so we thank you. We give you honor. We give you glory. It is all Jesus, guys. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, greetings to you in the wonderful and the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My heart is so excited to come to you once again on this Sunday morning with the word of the Lord. And what an awesome opportunity we had to celebrate and lift up the name of Jesus once again. We want to thank God for Jessica and the team all the way from Chicago. We are blessed. We are excited. And wasn't the praise and worship simply phenomenal this morning? 
I wonder if you can do us a favor this Sunday morning. If you can click on uh, My Church London in Facebook, click the like button, click the follow button. We would greatly appreciate that. Following on from that, you can find us on My Church London Instagram, My Church London YouTube. Click the like button on Instagram and the follow button on Instagram as well as YouTube and you will be kept up to date and kept abreast with what's happening in the life of the church. I wonder if you could join your heart with my heart as we lift up the, those, the hands of those who might be struggling with uh, the virus or COVID-19, who might have loved ones in hospital that might need a touch from God. How many of you know that we serve a God who is able, we serve a God who is capable, we serve a God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. Why don't you unite your heart with my heart as we pray. Heavenly Father, we say thank you that you are a faithful God. Heavenly Father, we say thank you that you are a good God. Father, we say thank you that you would do miracles because your word says only believe and you will see that all things are possible. So Father, we thank you for all things that become possible even in this moment for people who might be struggling with this COVID-19 virus and pandemic in the hospitals, among their loved ones, among their families, and among everyone around them. Father, we pray for miracles. Father, we pray for testimony. Father, we pray that you will heal, restore, and deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, guys, I want to thank you once again for those who have just joined us. For those who have kept coming back week after week, we are so excited that we could uh, come before you with the word of the Lord in our mouth and release the word of the Lord to you. And today is a day that's going to be slightly different. Today is a day where I believe what the Lord will have me say is very prophetic. It is speaking to the here and the now, but it's also speaking to the days to come. So we've been talking about I, D, me, and we're going to get into the work in a minute. But I want to take some time as we come around the world to pray, make sure our hearts are ready, make sure our hearts are receptive, and if you can do us a favor, if you can share this broadcast with somebody, tag a friend, invite a friend, inbox somebody, create a watch party, whatever you need to do, do it and get this message out so that we can be uh, 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 in the inbox on the news feed of social media. Why don't you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that the entrance of your word, it brings light and it brings understanding. Father, I thank you that this word will bear fruit in the lives of your people. Some 30 fold, some 60 fold, some 100 fold, according to the capacity that's within them. Father, I thank you right now that your word would prevail even in their lives. I pray that the seed of this word would germinate. It would grow. And God, I thank you that you will call us to move in the direction that you want us to move in Jesus name. Father we know it's not by might. Father we know it's by your spirit. Father we know that you would breathe upon this word in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well guys we are dealing with the subject called I be me. Somebody write in the comment section I be me. We are talking about I be me. And I want to recap for you this morning uh, what we discussed and what we talked about last week and we're going to revelate and we're going to preach in a minute. So we began to talk about how Jesus Christ is the firstborn in and among the brethren. We have access to God because we were born into the family of God. We began to look at when Adam fell, vacuums were created in the soul of man and those vacuums within the soul of man needed to be filled. Hence man went on a journey to find the thing that could fill his vacuums. We began to look at how uh, the, the, the nature of man lost the identity of God and because of Jesus Christ coming back into the earth through his death, burial and resurrection, we now reclaim that identity back into the family of God. This is why we say Jesus Christ is both the firstborn and the begotten of God. We began to 
look at how it's important that when we are born again, we are born into the family of God, but we also take on the DNA of God and we take on the characteristics of our spiritual family. You are born into a natural family, but you are also born into a spiritual family the day you became born again. So this is why we need to live from the inside out. In other words, we live from the Spirit of God out and we or we live from the Spirit of God out rather than the external in. We began to live, uh, we, 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 we began to recognize that the, the sum total of our thoughts is what actually directs the course of our life and we began to say our lives gravitate towards our most dominant thoughts and we began to look at and establish that the greatest discovery in the earth or, or, or the greatest discovery of man in the earth is purpose. The purpose outside of identity is merely taking a walk in life. This is why we said the purpose that we are walking has to correlate to the identity that we have in Christ Jesus. And then we began to talk about I am who God says I am. I want you to write that down one more time. I am who God says I am. And we began to look at um, purpose can never be defined outside of knowing your identity. I'll say that again. Our purpose can never be known and defined outside of knowing our identity. When we don't have purpose, we go through life with trial and error. Remember, I began to talk about when you don't have a purpose in your life, everything we experience is experienced through the lenses of trial and error. And how many of you know that trial and error sometimes is not good? All right, are you with me? You cannot live a fulfilled life without actually understanding your purpose. And your purpose is directly linked to your identity. Somebody say amen. Somebody say I am who God says I am. Somebody say I am who God says I am. You see, discovery leads to recovery. I said that last week. Discovery leads to recovery. Until you discover your purpose, you cannot recover and walk in your glorious identity. Your glorious identity is attached to the discovery of purpose, the discovery of the life of Christ in you. You see, Miles Monroe, and again I'll re-quote this, Miles Monroe says that this people generally fall into three groups of people. The few that make things happen, many who watch things happen, and the vast majority who have no notion of what happens. Are you a creator of facts or a creature of your environment? You see, the greatest tragedy is to watch potential die untapped. Don't make the mistake. I quoted this about 10 times last week. Let me requote this about five times today. Don't make the mistake <laughs> of telling God that you have nothing to offer. God does not make junk. Don't make the mistake of telling God that you have nothing to offer. Remember, God does not create a mistake or God does not create junk. Now, we began to study our scripture uh, at that particular moment and that was in the context of Exodus chapter 3. We, were, we read from verse 1 to 6 and verse 14. We began to look at how Moses had to overcome the spirit of abandonment. We looked at Moses, who we served. Moses served his father in law Jethro. His Jethro was a priest. We began to look at the place in which Moses served, the place in which Moses uh, led the Israelites, was a place called Midian. The place Midian has the derivative or the meaning called a uh, strife. And the book of James teaches us where strife is this every evil is found. Moses was serving in a place of evil and strife. This was the season of dry places for Moses, but Moses was consistent in the place that was his testing, because he, the Bible tells us that Moses served Jethro 40 years, and it was 40 years in which he served, and the number 40 deals with two components. The number 40 deals with the number of testing, and the number 40 deals with the number of transition. And we began to look at how Moses was tested in the wilderness, but the 40th year, the transition 
vision of the game for him to move into his prophetic destiny. And I'm about to revelate what I believe the Lord is saying to us. And if I can title my message today, I want to title it Damascus. Ooh, the demasking of a generation. Let me say it, Damascus. Somebody say Damascus. The demasking of a generation. Let me say it, the demasking of a generation. And today we're gonna deal with that. But we began to look at uh, how Moses was serving in a place that was dry. Because uh, wilderness is symbolic and synonymous of dry places. Uh, uh, you began to see how Moses was a candidate for a miracle because God was about to encounter him. God was about to meet him in a burning bush. God was about to take him from the back side of the desert and bring him into a place of opulence and bring him into a place of power and bring him into a place of glory and bring him into a place where God was about to reveal him and unveil him even to Pharaoh. This was what God was about to do. So this is why I want to prophesy to somebody here today that you are a candidate for a miracle. The demasking of a generation is about to take place even in the earth and you and I are part of that generation. You and I are part of the demasking of the Lord in this generation. I love what Shakespeare says. Shakespeare says unto thine own self be thy true. In other words take off the mask. So what God is getting ready to do even in the earth today. God is getting ready to get rid of all the masks that we put on. You see, until we can be truthful with who we are, deliverance can never take place in our life. Let me say that again. Until I am ready to be truthful before God about who I am and what my state is, deliverance can never be my portion. I love what the Bible says. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It's one thing to know something, it's another thing to apply what you know. So in other words, you can know truth until you blow in the face. But it's actually the application of what you know that actually liberates you and brings deliverance to your life. Am I preaching to somebody today? I want to prophesy to you that there is a demasking of everything that has been an entanglement in your life. Every bondage regarding uh, relationships, every bondage regarding marriages, every bondage regarding finances, every bondage re regarding careers. I'm prophesying that there is an unmasking of every assignment of hell that has lodged itself upon your life. May I propose to you that God is getting ready to reveal His true nature in and to, through you. Remember, when we introduce the subject called identity. One of the definitions of identity we began to say that identity is the, is the characteristics of an individual that make the individual unique. So I'm prophesying to you that because you come into salvation, because the grace of God gives you access to the very throne of God, because now you have access to the mind of God, you have access to the will of God, you have access to the heart of God, now the unveiling of who you really are will begin to take place in your life. No longer will you walk around with a mask on your face, hiding your true identity to fit in so that you can be accepted. You are accepted already into the beloved. Let me say this to you today. You are accepted into the beloved. You are accepted into the family of God. No longer will you walk around going to seek home. You can be accepted and embrace by. God has prepared a family for you. God has prepared something unique and powerful for you. All you gotta do is accept it today. All you gotta do is say, God, I wanna be truthful and true with you. I wanna walk with you. I wanna talk with you. I wanna fellowship with you. I wanna commune with you. This is the place in which God is bringing you and I so that his nature can envelop you, so that his nature can take over your nature so that his characteristics can be seen. How does God's characteristics be seen in your life? God's characteristics get seen in your life like this. It is the fruit of the Spirit. Because 
because he is the triune being. In other words, he is the Father. He's not only the Father, he's the Son. He's not only the Son, he's also the Spirit. And through the Spirit of God now, you and I have access to the character and to the nature of God. This character and this nature embodies my spirit. This is why when you get saved, when you get saved, your spirit is saved. Your soul is progressively being saved and your body will ultimately be saved. In other words, from your spirit when you live out, you begin to embody your soul. Your soul is embodied through the spirit of God, through the decisions and the fruit of the spirit that is evident and dominant in your life. Are you with me? Ah, oh, you're not hearing me. You see, we began to look at last week how there were three officers that translated or transferred from the old covenant into the new covenant. These three officers were the king, priest, and prophet. Of the three, two were given to you and I freely. The other one was given uh, to the officers of the fivefold ministry, that is the prophet. But the king and priest has been given to you and I. This is why 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 9 says that you and I are a royal priesthood this is who we truly are we began to look at Ephesians chapter 2 where the scripture began to highlight to us that we are called to do great works with God we are his workmanship so when something is the workmanship of its uh, of its creator it means we carry the DNA we carry the tools we carry the characteristics and we carry the nature of our creator. So you and I embedded in us through Christ carry the characteristics, carry the nature, carry the embed and embedded DNA of God. This is why the, uh, the writer to the, uh, to, the uh, to, to, to the Ephesian church could say we are his workmanship. Come on somebody. Somebody say I am his workmanship created for good works. So check this out. Good works is part of who you are. Listen, this is why the Bible says let your good works so shine before men that my father in heaven might be glorified you see it is the good works of God that allows the true nature of God to be seen through you and when the true nature of God has been seen through you men and women are drawn to that light and that light the Bible says ah, if I be lifted up I will draw all men and the fact that I am lifting up the name of God I am boasting in the great I am I am worshiping the one who created me. I am lifting up the name that is above all names. This is when uh, all men will be drawn unto him. Are you with me? You see, you got to understand that your preparation always meets opportunity. So the fact that we've been in a lockdown is not a dichotomy. It's not an excuse. It is not a paradox. No, sir. No, madam. It is a preparation. Because whatever you prepare for in this time, opportunity is sure to meet that preparation. So if there's no preparation that has gone on, guess what? The day when opportunity presents, itself, you won't know what to do. How do I know this? Remember, the Bible gives us the understanding about five fully virgins and five wise virgins. Of the five, uh, the Bible tells us, or, or, or the, the Bible highlights to us, that five were wise and five were foolish. The five foolish ones did not prepare for the coming of their appointment. Let me prophesy this to you. You've got to prepare for your appointment. You've got to be ready in and out of season. Don't ever be caught by surprise by the enemy. Don't ever be caught by surprise. If it's a surprise, guess what? I am prepared for all ungodly surprises because I move in God. I walk in God. I live a God because the reality is this. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you with me? You see, one of the big things we began to look at with Moses was, Moses, take off your shoes. Shoes was a mode of transport in transporting people from one season to another season or from one place or locale to another locale. This is what we saw in the disciples when Jesus began to wash their feet. And now Jesus begins, or, or the angel of the Lord says to Moses, Moses, take off your shoes. And Moses takes off his shoes. And this is a representation of the thing uh, of an old season. We have to let go of old seasons. We 
have to let go of old mindsets. We have to let go of old things that brought us down to an old mentality. We have to let go of things that keep us bound in entanglements of yesterday. This is why the scripture says uh, you cannot pour new wine into old wine skins because the wine skin will burst. My God, I thank you, Holy Ghost, for making me new. I thank you for the new wine. But God, I thank you for a new mindset. A new mindset that enables me to walk in the new things that God has prepared for me. For that God has uh, anointed for me. That God has prepared and predestined for me. We have to walk in that place, my God. Am I preaching to somebody? Because if we don't allow the description of God, if we don't allow the pruning of God, if we don't allow the course correction of God, in fact, let me deal with this today. You see, many times in life, there is what I call course correction. And many times, course correction, it seems abrupt and it seems like it is actually uh, 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 derailing us from the very purposes of God. But God is able. But God sometimes uh, corrects the course on which we are going so that He can preserve me, so that He can preserve you, so that He can preserve the destiny, and so that He can preserve those who are attached to the destiny. So many of us have encountered a course correction, and this is why it feels so painful. This is why it feels so difficult. This is why it feels so, uh, I am overwhelmed. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. This is because God is bringing course correction because He's about to demask. He's about to demask this generation. He's about to unmask this generation so that the shining of the Son of Man can be seen on the faces of the ones who God has called for such a time as this. You see, come on, somebody say, I am who God says I am. Come on, somebody, say it like you mean it. Come on, Bradley, say it like you mean it. Come on, Hanson, say it like you mean it. Come on, Samuel, say it like you mean it. Come on, Owen and Alicia, say it like you mean it. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have, and I will be what God says I need to be. Come on, somebody, come on, Pastor Ann. I am who God God says I am. Come on, Shahel. I will be what God wants me to be. Come on, Matthew. I am what God says I am. Come on, Tanaya. I am who God says I am. Are you with me? Oh my God. There were five things that we looked at, and I'm going to turn into my text in a minute. But you, you must recognize before God sends you, number one, before God sends you, He reveals who He is to you. Oh my God. Before God sends you, He's going to reveal who He is to you. Number two, once God reveals who He is to you, He reveals you to the world. Number three, the revealing of who you are always manifests at the place of encounter. You see, prophetically, I began to prophesy that God desires to reveal himself to the body of Christ in this season. And number five, we be, or number four, we began to prophetically speak about uh, 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 God wanting to reveal and manifest himself. And number five, God desires to identify this age. Now, for those who, who, who have been following us, we began to speak about uh, from the year 2020, that is the year of the open heavens. All right. We began to speak about that and we began to declare that 2020 is the year of open heavens. But more than just the year of open heavens, we began to look at the Greek number in the context of 2020. And the Greek number in the context of 2020 is the number 5780. But more specifically, we began to look at the number 80. And the number 80 is the Hebrew word pay. And the Hebrew word pay gives us the definition of a divine spark and also a mouth or, or, or a picture of the mouth. One of the things you've got to recognize about God, God to the Hebrew speaks in patterns. Let me teach this. I say it again. God to the Hebrew speaks in patterns. This is why when you study the book of Matthew chapter 1, you see the pattern of the lineage of Jesus. Yet to the Greek and Gentile, God speaks prophetically. So with in the context of the two cultures, God shows me and God shows him that he's a man that he should not lie. God watches over his word, over his pattern. 
action to perform it. So in other words, COVID-19 that has come, this pandemic that has hit the earth today, hasn't taken God by surprise. So from a Hebrew premise, I can understand that there are patterns throughout the scriptures that show me that God is not surprised by this pandemic and that God is about to vindicate and bring solutions and answers to the body of Christ. But to the Gentile and to the Greek, he begins to prophetically declare, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of captivity, even in the midst of Babylonian slavery, even in the midst of all kinds of trauma, I have plans, and these plans are, are, are over and above even the slavery, the bondage, the poverty that you might experience. So body of Christ globally and corporately, take courage because this is the demasking of a generation unfolding before us. Oh my God, let me prophesy this thing to you. There is a demasking of a generation uh, taking place before us. How do I know it? And I'm going to get to, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 9. But let me just continue my thought about the number 5780. The number 5780 deals with the context of pay, or the Hebrew word pay. The Hebrew word pay gives us a picture of a mouth, but it also gives us the meaning of a divine spark. So guess what? The very attack against the, 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 the people within the earth has been against their respiratory uh, 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 organs, against their breathing apparatus in their body, against everything that causes their breath to breathe. This is a direct attack upon the prophetic words and the prophets within our dispensation and within our age. But my Bible teaches me that you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Listen to me, that whenever we begin to teach about open heavens, we begin to also highlight the context of a redefinition. And God is bringing a redefinition even to the church and even to this generation. And this is why we are seeing it happen at large throughout the globe. Now check this out. You must recognize this. That, uh, we see in the context of the word pay, we have a divine spark. And when the days of Pentecost had fully come, the Bible highlights to us that there were cloven tongues of fire and there was a release of a new dispensation within the body of Christ. So guess what? We find ourselves at a different and a new dispensation within the body of Christ and within the earth. So guess what? If you have your Bibles, turn with me now to Acts chapter. 9 and we're reading from verse 1. Check what the Bible says. The Bible says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, went to the high priest and asked letters from them to the synagogue of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. My God. And as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting? Verse 5. And he said, this is Paul speaking, and he said, Who are you, Lord? How did Paul identify who was speaking to him? Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. My God. You see, this is so powerful because it's a continuation from the encounter that we see in Exodus chapter 3 with Moses. Through the burning bush, a voice comes, my God. And now we find the same scenario with the Apostle Paul. A voice appears, my God. How powerful is that? Did you hear what, did you, did you just hear what I just said? A voice appears. So in other words, the voice had a form. Oh my God. You see, Damascus, what is this place? What is so significant about this, this place called Damascus? Damascus was a city and it was the capital of Syria. It is known and widely known that Damascus is the oldest continuous city in the world. 
Now the book of Acts highlights to us that Paul was on his way to, to on his way from Jerusalem to Damascus. Paul was known for persecuting Christians. Paul was known for capturing, uh, uh, capturing Christians. Paul was known for being a menace among Christians. Paul was known among the Christians for being somebody not to mess with. Paul was a, 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 a Jew among Jews. Paul was part of the Sanhedrin. Paul was uh, a learned man. Paul was, there was no one that could argue with Paul or debate Paul when it came to the law. Paul was known for his intelligence. Paul was known for the law. Paul was one who was astounding even the greatest minds of his age when it came to the law. So there was nobody that could contest him. Likewise with Moses in the beginning, you see the Israelites were in captivity for 400 years. Uh, Pharaoh had gods that defined even the areas and the locale in which the slaves worked. In other words, in which the Jewish people functioned and operated. Likewise, in the context of the book of Acts, we see there was nobody that could compete with this man called the Apostle Paul. Yet there was a voice that appeared and a voice began to speak to him and even those who were journeying with him heard the voice and said and, and saw nobody. The man fell to his face and said, Lord, what would you have me do? How did Paul recognize who was speaking to him? You see, when you come into contact with the real DNA of who you are, you will recognize it. Most times what happens in life, we recognize that uh, God has sent somebody to bring peace, somebody to bring hope, somebody to bring deliverance. But because of our pride within our heart, we tend to uh, not want to take off the mask, the demarking, because it was at the place or on the root going down to Damascus where God literally demasks a man called Saul and changes his name. Here we see a miracle that takes place in the life of the Apostle Paul. The life of the Apostle Paul begins to change drastically. Paul has an encounter with God, a voice out of the heavens, you see. Whenever the heavens open, it redefines. And this is why we began to speak about 2020. It is open heavens. This is why we are speaking over your finances that God is redefining it. That God is bringing an open heavens to you. This is why we are prophesying over your business. That God is bringing definition to it. God is redefining it. This is why we spoke collectively that 2020 is the year of the open heavens over your family, over your marriage, over your career, over everything that pertains to your life. God is bringing a redefinition so that your true identity can change. One of the most outstanding and remarkable characteristics that happens in the story that's so intriguing for me is this, that Saul now becomes Paul. His true identity is revealed. Your true identity is unmasked at the place of encounter. Let me prophesy. May you experience an encounter of God where you can experience the true identity of who you truly are. Because when you look into his reflection, you see him, my God, God, I want to look into your reflection. God, I want to look into your life. God, I want to look into your face. This is why Moses says, I want to see you face to face, God. Because when I look into your face, I become the very thing I beheld. And God, I want to behold your glory. This is why we sing songs like that. I want to be where you are. I want to behold your glory. Why? Because it changes the true nature of who I am. And the true nature of who I am reflects the nature of who God is is in me and who God is in me now begins to envelop, develop and outgrow even the soulish parts of my life. Listen to me. There must be a demasking in your life. Come on. Somebody say there must be a demasking in my life. Let me repeat the quote of Shakespeare. Born to thine own self be thy true. I said it before that deliverance will never take place until you come to the end of the enjoyment of your struggle until you come to the end of your entanglement, until you come to, I've had enough and I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. It is that 
that place now where deliverance can kick in because now you recognize God. I've tried all I've tried. I've done all I could do, but God, I need you to step into my life today so that you can be who I need you to be in my life because I understand it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit, oh God. You see, I love, I love, I love what God is getting ready to do. Because here you see, a voice preceded the, the movement and the mobility of the Apostle Paul. A voice came to him. Guess what? This is the decade of the mouth. So before anything materializes in the earth, you must speak, my God. You see, I'll say it again, nothing happens until something is spoken. So I don't know about you, but I'm trusting God for millions, millions in dollars, millions in pounds, millions in gold. I'm trusting God for that measure. Why? So that we can build the things that God needs us to build in the earth. I don't know what you are trusting God for, but make sure you don't uh, allow yourself to speak yourself out of the place of what you are believing God for, because everything that starts in your life starts with an utterance of a word. Somebody say, God, speak a word to me. God, speak a word to me, so that I can walk in the true identity of where I am going. So God, demask me. Take off the deal. Take off the mask off of my face, so that I can walk. I don't know about you, but I want to encourage you. Maybe you've been on your road to Damascus. I don't know what your Damascus is, but the Damascus in your life is about to bring about an encounter in your life. I want to encourage you today. Get ready for your encounter. Even as you've been on your way to your Damascus, your Damascus might be your job. Your Damascus might be your relationships. Your Damascus might be your financial status. I don't know what it is, but you know what? I'm on, uh, uh, Paul's, uh, uh, on his way to Damascus, the Apostle Paul had an encounter. I'm praying for you today that you will have an encounter. An encounter that will reshape you, remold you, redefine you, and bring about a context in your life that uh, the world will begin to appreciate and enjoy and that you will bring hope to hopeless situations. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so much that you could join us on this work. So remember, we began to highlight to you that the greatest discovery on the earth is the greatest is the discovery of purpose. Purpose outside of identity is meaningless. So God wants to ID you. Somebody say, ID me, God. ID me, identify me, God, in a world that is calling for identity, identity of this and identity of that. We are saying, God, you ID me. Because when you ID me, it means everything around me begins to take on the form of what I'm carrying instead of what that thing highlights and dictates to me to become. I love you all. I bless you all. I know God is getting ready to meet you, each of you at the point of your need. I know God is getting ready to encounter you. I know God is getting ready to heal you. I know God is getting ready to deliver you. I know God is getting ready to save you. I know God is getting ready to uh, uh, set you free. I know God is getting ready to encounter you in a mega, mega, mega way. I love you all. God bless you. I thank, I thank God for your life and we look forward to hearing from you. Remember, don't forget, every Thursday night, 7 p.m. UK time, 8 p.m. South African time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, we have our e-connect groups. Our e-connect groups is a place where we grow together, where we connect in, where we fellowship, and where we have like-minded relationships. For those who are looking for a church to plug into, we have the best church. My church, London, is the best church. We have locations in Johannesburg, we have locations in Ireland, and we have locations in London. We are looking forward to meeting you and connecting with you. For those of you who don't know who they really are and what their true identity is, I want to encourage you today. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Maybe you've walked with God previously. And maybe you've 
walked away from him or maybe you've never ever had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ I want to extend an invitation to you today to pray a simple prayer that I prayed over 23 years ago and the prayer simply went like this because the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead you will be saved I want to pray for you and I want you to pray this after me maybe you're feeling that you want to walk with God again, pray this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your forgiveness of sin. Thank you for washing me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for purifying me from all unrighteousness. Forgive me for all my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me new again. Thank you that my, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you that you've forgiven me. Thank you that I am saved, washed, and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I am now born again. I am dead to sin. The old man no more lives. Come on, guys, why don't we celebrate what God has done even in the, the lives of those who said this prayer with me. I love you all. God bless you. If you were one of those that prayed this prayer, why don't you do me a favor? And why don't you, um, why don't you, um, get in touch with us, send us an inbox and let us know you prayed. Let us know you connected with us and one of our pastors will get in touch with you. They will pray with you and they will bless you. God bless you. I love you all. Thank you so much for your time. Remember, we are back again every Sunday morning, 10.30. And don't forget to join us tonight at 6 p.m. for Piercing the Darkness. God bless you. I love you all. And this is your good friend, Apostle Phil Vermeil. Get in touch with us, send us an inbox and let us know you prayed, let us know you connected with us and one of our pastors will get in touch with you, they will pray with you and they will bless you. God bless you, I love you all, thank you so much for your time. Remember, we are back again every Sunday morning 10.30 and don't forget to join us tonight at 6pm for Piercing the Darkness. God bless you, I love you all and this is your good friend, Apostle Phil Vermeulen.